Chief is a family-owned, Nebraska-based company comprised of seven diverse brands. Chief, trusted, tested, true. Good morning, everyone. I'm hooking on a fuel trailer in the Ford that does not have a backup camera, so I have to do it the old-fashioned way, you know, turn on and look. How close do you think we got? We're, we're on a decline. So I have a little bit of a disadvantage. We'll see how this goes. Not, not even close at all. Let's try this again. Second try. Ah, this trailer, even empty, is a little bit too heavy for me to just pick it up and set it on the hitch. We have an aluminum trailer that I can do that with and it is my favorite to hook up. It's so easy. Clearly have no depth perception. I somehow ended up even further away. I got it lined up where I want it. Now I'm just going to move the hitch around like this so that it actually is level. Why is everything always so rusty? It's just like a recipe for busted knuckles. Life hack. In theory, I just back straight up and it works. Here we go. Only took me about six more times, but I got it. Even if you're just going out to the field, it's pretty important that you hook up every part of your trailer. The two safety chains, the trailer brakes, all of that. Always cross your chains. I don't know why you always cross your chains, but I know you're supposed to. Whew, I'm sweaty now. Let it go, fill this fuel trailer up with fuel and bring it out to Grant in the combine. And off to the field to fill up the combine and the grain cart tractor. You would think that harvest time would mean cooler temperatures and not having to deal with pivots anymore. But as you can see, we still have to turn on the motors to move the pivots to get them out of the way so that we can harvest the crop underneath. Also, it's 95 degrees outside. It is hot and the beans are drying down so fast. We have officially made it, almost the last pass of the first field of the year. Hopefully this pivot went far enough that we can get past it. Dirty window. Yeah, sorry, someone didn't okay, Here we go. So we have pivot over here and power lines over here. You gotta watch out for them. Tight squeezes. So now we'll turn this into a toaster real quick. <laughs> Okay, that just started all the insides of the combine. That's everything that's underneath of us and behind us. Now the head starts. Faster. Speed it up Faster. just by pressing those buttons right there. Ease it forward and we will get all the crop that was sitting under the pivot right here. Thank goodness for power steering and auto steer. Oh my goodness, the camera does not do it justice how close the pivot is to us. Ah! Alright, that's good, that's good. I don't know who planted this field, but don't need to plant that close to the pivot. Alright, easy there. Got a lot of moving parts here. Whew. That's it, Grant. 
We finished our first field of harvest 2023. Uh, just a little bit left. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Oh. So close. Somebody thought it'd be a good time to show me a picture of pumpkins. And look what happened. I plugged. I'm not gonna see any. Alright, it's gonna shoot out. It should anyway. It's not good. figure out this deer combine, huh? There's a lot of levers. Okay. Now we have to unlock. Nope, you had it right. I had it right? Yeah, push it back in a little bit. Like push the whole push the whole side in. There you go. Okay. Which one do you like better, John Deere or Case? Uh, yeah, Case is gonna win the battle on this one. All you have to do is pull out one thing and you're done. I don't know about all this. I think this looks a lot cleaner though. It is uh, not as user friendly, I'll say that. I'll give you that. Laura is filling up the combine with fluids. I'll give you a tour of the top of the combine. For those of you who don't know, this is where all the grain is stored. That little window right there, right there is where I sit. This auger brings grain up here. Those augers in the bottom drain the grain tank. And there's little sensors everywhere for moisture and weight. All of those things. Also little windows up top so I can see how full it is. And this platform I'm standing on is actually the uh, engine cover or you could even call it the hood of the combine because the engine's underneath. That is the air filter right here. Um, the hydraulic system which you saw us messing with yesterday when we broke that line. A huge fuel tank, a uh, depth tank, and the radiators are right there. So all the business is in the back of the combine that powers everything anyway. Here's a good shot of the entire field that we just did. It was 80 acres. Good first day of harvesting. How's that dev treating you? I don't like it very much. 
The combine was totally empty before we started filling up. It was blinking red, it needed fuel. So before you watch any further, I want you to comment your guess on how many gallons of diesel fuel we are going to put in this tank. I'll tell you when we're done filling up. Whew, wow. That was a lot of fuel. 300 gallons. How many? 300. 300 even? 308. Oh, thirsty girl. Can I pass this down to you? Yeah. Okay, here we go. And I will take this. Oh. Uh, if you missed the last video we posted, combine broke down yesterday and lost almost all of its hydraulic fluid. That's what goes right here. And you can see this indicator is still really low. So we're going to add some more. It's like apple juice to the combine. Apple juice. Okay. And that's good right there. Perfect. 308 gallons of diesel fuel. You got all the caps on tight, right? All the caps are on. Okay, Dad, triple check. I did that one time last year. But luckily the filter, the screen filter caught everything. You're not all the way in on the ladder. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like this very much. You like the red ones better? Okay, at the end of harvest, we'll have an overall review. Oh. I do not like that. It's not made for uh, small girls. No. Our hydraulic line fix from yesterday, it's working good. You can see that one, no leaks. Goes all the way down to here, no leaks. We're Let's good. Let's just do a... A triple check here. Zip ties you can, are still in place. Well, you can see this this red stuff with the bean dust. That was from yesterday. Lines all appear to be intact. Combines are super complicated machines. This is just a small diagram of just the belts, I believe. There is a lot of moving parts. So when we do things like fuel stops, it's really important just to take a couple extra minutes do a little look through, look for any rubbing spots, uh, any spots that could potentially get hot, um, collections of debris from beans or corn. We, uh, we kind of need this thing, so it's important to keep it in good running shape. AC is on full blast. Too hot out here. Let's move this operation to the next field. Grant is heading back to the combine and I'm hopping in the grain cart to take this and the tractor to the field. The tractor cab is really where it all began for me. And so anytime, whether it's in planter or grain cart or disc or anything, anytime I get to spin in a tractor cab just feels extra special. First things first, we're just going to click through some warnings. It is very hot outside, but for video's sake, I'm just going to turn the fan down just a little bit. Got a little air ride seat. I'm just gonna push this down and make sure that the heated seat is off. Make sure that my feet can actually touch the ground here. There we go. Okay, give the tractor a second to warm up. Be sure to put my flashers on so people know that I'm coming down the road. And we just move this little throttle out and forward, and there we go. We are moving. Careful not to hit the semi-truck. We'll have Grant's dad come back to this field and haul that into town, and get going. The grain cart is empty right now. The top speed on this tractor is about 26 miles an hour, but uh, I doubt we'll get close to going that fast. Better uh, safe and slow than sorry. There's two different ranges. So the first one is F1. This is like low. The fastest you can go in F1 is 12.5. And I can have that set for as little as like a half mile an hour. So a half mile an hour would be all the way forward in F1. But then I also have a second range. So I'm just gonna speed all the way up in F1. Okay, and 
now I'm going to move to F2. Now this right now, the top speed in F2 is set at 19.8, but that's where you can set it by scrolling right here and go all the way up to 26 miles an hour. If you're going downhill in the right conditions, you can get it to go faster than 26 miles an hour. I think the fastest I've gone in one of these tractors is maybe like 27 and a half miles an hour, something like that. I prefer to keep it a little bit slower than that. You would be shocked at how fast 25 miles an hour feels in something this big. That is why during harvest season or planting season, times that are really busy and there's lots of equipment moving on the roads, I really appreciate people's patience because this is a lot of equipment to be going down the road and it's not super easy for me to get over or you know just like pull into a driveway and let somebody pass. So I really appreciate people who I share the roads with, their patience with me. So I try to get on the road and off the road as fast as I can. Being the grain cart operator when you're harvesting soybeans is definitely a pretty slow job because it takes a lot longer for the combine to fill up when you're cutting soybeans versus when you're harvesting corn. So, oh, never mind, I'm getting a phone call. Hold on. Anyways, soybeans produce anywhere from like 20, 40, 60, if you're lucky, 80 bushels to the acre. Okay, um, whereas corn produces anywhere from like 150 to 200 to 250, if you're super lucky, 300 bushels the acre. I would be shocked if we had any corn that did that well this year, just because of how much heat we had and the lack of rain. Um, but you just are getting a lot more volume per acre with corn than you are with soybeans. So being a green cart operator in soybean harvest is definitely a lot of a waiting game. So much so, unfortunately for me in this heat, you usually just shut the tractor off. This does give me a good opportunity if I am going to be a good grain car driver. I can go walk behind the combine and uh, look for grain loss. Then Grant can make any adjustments as necessary. I probably won't do that now because we're just in the end rows and it's really hard to judge a field off the end rows. So now I can just get some cinematic shots for you guys. Sides of these pods, these little hairs that they're covered in, they literally just swirl in the air and stick to everything, including your eyes, your nose, and your throat. It's bad. That being said, I think I'll stick to the safety of this microwave of a cab in here, at least until the dust settles down. There we go. Get a little airflow in here. Grant is not a huge fan of radio contact. He prefers it to just be quiet in the cab so he can focus. I, on the other hand, love radio chatter. Uh, and I intend to talk to him quite a lot over these radios this harvest. While I have some downtime, I'm just going to go ahead and fill up the tractor with diesel and death. Okay, we've been summoned. Put the journaling to the side. It is time to go get Grant from the combine. Oh. I'll need you very soon. There we go. Let's go get him. I don't know. I want to like talk to you, but then, like, is there other people on the line? I don't know. <laughs> Do you care? Let's shut down the shop here. Well, no, no, no. How about this? If you have something to say that the YouTube... I wasn't pressing the button down that whole time. If you have something that you can say in front of the YouTube audience, tell it to me over the radio, because you never know when I'm going to be recording. But if you want to really talk to me, call me. 
Oh, that AC feels good. These veins suck. Are they too wet or are they not yielding well? Also, are you coming or are you just in there? <laughs> Whew, we are coming just in time. He is full. I should have been paying better attention. It has been a whole year since I've driven grain cart. I hope I remember how to do this. We reached the end of the field. So now I just wait here while Grant finishes unloading. He can move around and move the auger around to fill where he likes, and then he will turn around and take another pass. I thought you just pull ahead. Betty, do you want to be petted? Are you just fall? You just want to be petted, don't you? Woo! Good doggo. She's crazy. That's Grant's parents' dog. All right. Who thinks I remember how to drive a semi truck? I need to back it up out of the way. Hopefully, I can do that without jackknifing it. Good old freight shaker. Okay, all the way over, all the way up. That wasn't so bad. Big tractor, baby tractor. It's a good thing we're harvesting these beans while we are. Do you see how blown over they are? That makes for kind of tough combining. I hope things are going well in the cab. I just heard a nasty noise from over there. Had to stop mid unloading. Grant's going to try reversing the head here. Ooh, that is not good. Do you see what's wrong right there? That big bunch coming into the feeder house. So right now Grant is running it in forward and reverse, trying to get it worked through. Might have to pull him out manually. These soybeans are so blown over. Oh my goodness. I don't know if the camera does it justice. These are supposed to be standing up straight. Holy I cow. Only, I can only go about two and a half miles an hour. And it just, it just balls up and comes through. What a mess. These stems are still so green. Look at that. They, uh, they might look soft, but let me tell you, these things are sharp and pokey and they grab on your skin. The ends of these pods, do you see that little needle point? I know they look unassuming, but these things can be nasty. That combined with all of the dust that they create is just a, a recipe for not fun. See all that dust that collects up there? Yikes. Holy cow. Okay, I had Grant raise the reel up and now I'm just gonna grab these and try to clear all of this green mess out. Watching my fingers, these are super sharp. Oh, these are wet. Oh, that is not great. Okay, I'm gonna get right there, okay? So just, okay. I'm gonna crawl up here. Like I said, being very careful. And I'm gonna grab this, they're stuck right here. All right, now let's try. Oh! Just 
just a wet, hot mess in here. <laughs> Saved a caterpillar from certain extinction. Just gonna set him right there with his friends. So this is all unplugged in the feeder houses, but this belt is really having problems moving. And you remember that bean dust I was talking about? I just like straight up dirt. <laughs> it's packed so tight under here. Just this nasty combination of green beans, dirt, and dust. Awesome, tell them thanks. Okay, Gage is done with school and football practice. If you're new to the channel, that is the high school kid that Grant and I have employed since last year this time. So he is going to come over and take over for me and I'm going to go make some supper and bring it out to them. I'm enjoying this beautiful sunset, which I'm going to share with you. I have lunch right next to me or dinner or supper or whatever you want to call it, last meal of the day. And, uh, Grant just called and said that he's actually going to come home now. He needed a ride, so I guess I'm gonna pick him up. But look at this sunset, you guys. Calling it an evening. That's way later than I was expecting to go. All right, Gage, you can just meet me up at the front and I will unload on you. Things are getting tough, really wet out here. Oh boy. We're racing. This is probably the fastest we've gone all day. You're gonna beat me. I gotta go to high gear. <laughs> How fast? Nine miles oh, an hour. Oh. He's walking away yeah, first of <laughs> <laughs> Gage pulls away. Ready to go. He's even got a load on. Oh man. I think we're all pretty excited about getting home. Yeah, the it's not like the moisture of the beans that gets too wet. It's like the stalks get too wet and I can't cut them. They just don't flow into the head very good. Uh, I thought the beans just got too wet. No, they're still like left and five, so we're doing good, it's just that the stalks are not cooperating. Pepper says, if you're interested, we sell t-shirts on Bunker Branding, and we also just launched sweatshirts, and we are hoping to get to 500,000 subscribers by the end of harvest. Isn't that right, Pepper? So if you haven't already, now's your chance to subscribe. Ending the day with some kitten snuggles. They are officially out and about. It's crazy. They changed so much in the past week. What an excellent day of harvest. Um, I hope you guys don't get bored of stuff like this because we've got a long season to go. We will see you in the next one. Bye.